Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about SIADH, Syndrome of Inappropriate Antidiuretic Hormone Secretion. So, this problem, SIADH, mainly affects the sodium concentration in our body. Sodium is very, very important for our cells especially in neuronal cells when the sodium is low we can see the patient is having altered behavior confusion coma seizures and generalized weakness all these things are the features of uh, hyponatremia hyponatremia means sodium levels less than the normal value that is 135 milligrams per liter so when we talk about hyponatremia previous classes we have seen that there are three important types of hyponatremia in one type the body water is normal other type body water is high and third type body water is uh, first type body water is normal second type is body water is high third type is body water is low in that you can see the uh, this picture you can see the this diagram you can see the this is a representative uh, diagram uh, first one is body water and sodium content in that body water. The second test tube, what you are seeing is body water is normal and the sodium levels are low. That means it is a hyponatremia with normovolemia, normovolemic hyponatremia. Second test tube, what you are seeing is sodium is normal but water content is very high hypervolemic relative hyponatremia that is hypervolemic hyponatremia actually the sodium is normal third one is both body water and sodium is reduced and SIADH comes in the first category that normal volemic hyponatremia but the problem in uh, this SIADH is there is a slight increase in the body water that we will see what is that afterwards but clinically there is no edema whereas in second type what you are seeing is uh, patient who is having hypervolemic hyponatremia that is uh, cardiac failure liver failure nephrotic syndrome hypo hypoproteinemia all these things there will be increased retention of water in our body patient will be clinically edematous whereas SIADH there is a slight increase in the body water but clinically you don't see any edema so hyponatremia there are different types of hyponatremia true hyponatremia that is hypoosmolar hyponatremia whenever sodium is low we have to always check the serum osmolality in pseudo hyponatremia osmolality may be normal or high osmolality that we will not see now SIADH comes in hyponatremia with normal ECF volume extracellular fluid volume is normal so there will not be any clinical edema in that you have SIADH hypothyroidism glucocorticoid deficiency post-operative pain psychogenic polydipsia and that most important is hyponatremia hypothyroidism also patient can have slightly edema but that edema is different from edema due to cardiac failure liver failure here it is non-pitting type of edema it is not volume overloaded edema it is a uh, material which comes under the skin that produces non-pitting type of edema. That, that is a different issue, we will not go that. SIADH is a condition where there is increased loss of salt through the kidneys. There is slight water accumulation in the body, but there is no clinical edema like volume overload conditions. Hyponatremia can have different types of clinical presentation. It can be due to, uh, like it can be uh, mild, moderate or severe. Mild is anorexia, headache, nausea, vomiting, lethargy, weakness, moderate personality changes, muscle cramps, muscle weakness, confusion, ataxia. Severe, there will be drowsiness, diminished uh, deep tendon reflexes, convulsions, coma, death. So, depending on the severity and presentation sometimes acute hyponatremia have more symptoms than chronic hyponatremia so duration of the illness is very important and severity of the hyponatremia also very important for the presentation of hyponatremia 
Now, basic investigations in uh, any hyponatremia, we have three important sets of investigation in a case who is having hypernatremia. One is plasma osmolality. If the plasma osmolality is low, then it is a true hypernatremia. If it is elevated or normal, there are different reasons. We, it is called as pseudo hypernatremia. So, low means real hypernatremia. Now, once you diagnose hypernatremia, normally when there is hypernatremia, that means serum sodium is low, there should not be any renal loss of sodium. That is very important. Normally, somebody develops hyponatremia, there should not be any renal loss of sodium. Kidney will try to retain sodium uh, through the urine. So, kidney will not uh, send out sodium through the urine. So, there will be a blockage of uh, sodium loss in the kidneys. But in SIIDH, that is lost. Actually, the sodium is lost through the kidneys. That is why patient is developing hyponatremia. So, urine concentration serum urine sodium concentration is elevated so if it is more than 20 milliequivalents per liter it is mostly SIDH or salt wasting nephropathy diuretic therapy hypoaldosteronism all these conditions you can get urine sodium more than 20 SIDH it will be slightly higher more than 40 milliequivalents per liter you can see in many patients since there is good amount of urine passing through the kidney serum, urine osmolality also will be uh, increased. So, osmolality uh, can be urine osmolality, the appropriate renal response to hypoosmolality is to excrete the maximum diluted urine, urine osmolality should be uh, slightly low. So, these are the basic investigation you will be doing in uh, hypernatremia. So, elevated plasma osmolality, elevated urine osmolality, uh, sorry, low plasma osmolality, elevated urine osmolality and elevated urine sodium. So, these are the uh, uh, features you can see. Now, a few things about anti-diuretic hormone or ADH. Vasopressin or ADH or AVP is a hormone produced from the hypothalamus in the brain. Then it goes to the posterior pituitary and released from there and uh, it goes to the circulation. It has got two important functions like it promotes the amount of solute free water reabsorption into the circulation from the filtrate in the kidneys, tubules and nephrons. Second, AVP produces vasoconstriction. In that, first one is very important. It promotes the amount of solute, v, solute free water reabsorption. So, water reabsorption is very important uh, uh, feature of uh, anti-diuretic hormone. It is anti-diuretic hormone. So, if there is a disproportionate secretion of this anti-diuretic hormone, there is a high chance of water retention in the body. So, that is why patient is having water retention, but clinically you do not see any edema. That is also very important. That we will see why it is like that. It is a disorder for impaired water excretion due to inability to suppress the secretion of anti-diuretic hormone or AVP. If water intake exceeds the, redu uh, the reduced urine output, the resultant water retention leads to the development of hyponatremia. Here there is a sodium loss through the kidneys and there is water retention in the body due to this hormonal imbalance. So both are there, there is water retention and removal of the sodium through the kidneys. Now there are different causes for SIDH. So, whenever you see a, a patient who is having hyponatremia, we always check whether it is a SIIDH or not. In that uh, once you diagnose SIIDH, always we have to take a chest x-ray because we have to rule out pulmonary causes. That is the most important cause like it can be a tumor in the lungs, it can be pneumonia, TB, uh, positive pressure ventilation, acute respiratory distress syndrome uh, or respiratory failure, stroke, trauma, infections. Many drugs can produce uh, SIADH and uh, post-operative conditions, acute power failure and idiopathic SIADH also can be there. So, whenever we diagnose, clinically diagnose SIADH, always take a chest x-ray. That is a minimum requirement. 
chest x-ray has to be taken to rule out any lung parenchymal problem like malignancy or infection. So, water increased water reabsorption is the major problem major uh, feature of SIDH. This increased water absorption with increased urinary loss of sodium both one is water water is reabsorbed that will produce dilution of uh, available sodium and sodium is also lost through the kidneys both will produce significant hyponatremia but clinically there will not be any edema that is because an, an another mechanism because in SIDH we have seen there is volume retention the resulting volume expansion activates secondary natriuretic mechanism that is AVP or ANP production will be increased atrio natriuretic peptide ANP and decreased secretion of aldosterone. Aldosterone there is a, the, the, the actions of aldosterone will be similar to uh, ADH but there is a reduction in the secretion of aldosterone that produces more urine excretion and uh, it is not like a, a complete removal of water the urine excretion will be slightly increased with this type of hormones like aldosterone reduction of aldosterone it is a negative feedback mechanism so patient will never go to a volume overloaded condition but definitely there is a uh, minimal volume expansion but there is no volume overloaded condition like uh, patient who is having liver failure that is a secondary hyperaldosteronism their volume retention is more and clinically patient is having volume overloaded here uh, ADH secretion is inappropriate so volume retention occurs but that will be compensated by reduction in the secretion of aldosterone so both are having uh, similar actions that's why uh, you can see here both are having increased reabsorption of water in the kidneys and collecting ducts the actions of ADH and aldosterone are almost similar so here ADH secretion is inappropriate that retains more water and here because of the counter regulatory mechanism aldosterone secretion is reduced so the reduction in the aldosterone will produce some reduction in the water retention so the patient will not have a clinical water retention clinical examination you don't find any any pitting pedal edema in these patients but whereas in cardiac failure liver failure kidney failure all these condition there is water retention but it is uh, the patient can have clinical edema that is the main difference between SIADH and uh, hypervolemic hyponatremia SIADH is a normal volemic hyponatremia uh, other conditions are hypervolemic hyponatremia. SIADH also there is minimal volume expansion but that will never go to a condition like cardiac failure or liver failure that is because of the reduction in the aldosterone levels. Now diagnosis is very important whenever sodium is low we always check a plasma osmolality. Serum sodium will be less than 135 or 130 milliequivalents per liter. Plasma osmolality is low because th there is no uh, uh, sodium content in the blood or reduction in the sodium content in the blood. So, osmolality will be low. Inappropriately concentrated urine. So, the urine osmolality is elevated. The urine sodium is elevated. That is why urine osmolality is elevated. Moreover, there is concentrated urine. Water is retained. Water is not lost through the kidneys and only sodium is lost through the kidneys. So, the urine osmolality will be elevated. Urine con sodium concentrated concentration is also elevated. Normally, when there is uh, hyponatremia, the urine sodium should never be more than 20 milligrams per liter. Here it is more than 20 or sometimes it is more than 40 milligrams per liter. So, these are important things and you should patient should not have any renal disease, patient should not have any adrenal disease, patient should not have any thyroid dysfunction. These all are important for a def, uh, definitive diagnosis. Most of these patients can have uh, uh, hypouricemia, they have their uric acid may be low because of the volume expansion. 
other cause of uh, hyponatremia should be thoroughly uh, investigated and uh, ruled out. Now, whenever we have a, a diagnosis of SIDH, we have to always cal calculate what is the excess of volume. So, excess of volume can be calculated by total body water. Uh, total body water can be calculated by 0.6 into body weight, total body water into 1 minus actual serum sodium by desired sodium. So, that will give you the amount of water excess in our body. So, clinically, there is no excess because you, you do not get any pitting type of pedal edema. But once you make a diagnosis of uh, SIADH, you have to calculate the excess of body water in the patient. If the water is excess like 1 liter excess or 2 liter excess, well, you try to remove that much amount of water itself patient will improve or uh, 5 liters of excess is there. You monitor intake output chart and see after 5 liters of fluid uh, removal from the body, you can see the sodium levels are becoming normal. But that volume removal is not, removal is not very easy. Uh, it is only theoretical, it is not very easy to remove that much amount of volume from the body because we need to give drugs, we need to restrict the water, so many uh, problems can occur during the treatment. So, the most effective way of treating this excess volume is water restriction. So, water restriction means normally we may take uh, 3 to 4 liters of water every day. Some, some patients may take 1.5 to 2 liters every day and in ICU we may be giving lot of drugs which is diluted in normal saline or dextrose water and on top of that we may be giving normal diet also which also may contain fluid. So, restriction of fluid is not very easy to, to be done in uh, emergency room or ICU but we can restrict the water into uh, 800 to 1 liter per day. So, once you start restricting like that, we can see every day intake output we are, uh, chart we have to maintain, we can see slow, slowly sodium levels are becoming normal, we can see. So, we have already learned that the problem in SIADH is water retention. So, if you try to reduce the water intake, the total body water can come down to a normal level. So, the excess body water we can calculate and we can see the amount of volume uh, loss from the body by calculating the intake output chart and see whether it is a positive balance or negative balance, you can calculate and see. Second thing is diuretics. So, it is not a first line therapy, it is only second line therapy. So, then you can give uh, Lasix. So, Lasix can be given slowly, introduce Lasix or uh, diuretic that removes some amount of water from the body. So, first level of treatment is always water restriction do not give water, then give Lasix or any diuretic that removes water, sometimes some amount of sodium also will be removed. So, we have to be very careful when we are treating with Lasix. So, water will be removed from the body, but uh, fortunately Lasix or Fluzamide removes more water than sodium. So, water removal will be good, but some amount of sodium also will be removed. Then if the patient is not improving, then we have to start 3% saline. 3% saline, large quantity of sodium, each 100 ml may contain 51.3 milli equivalents of sodium. That we will see afterwards. High protein diet may be helpful in SIADH. Now, vasopressin receptor antagonist. These are, these are the drugs which is mainly used in uh, resistant hyponatremia which is due to urinary loss of sodium. So, the main drug which we use here is Tolvaptan. Tolvaptan or Conivaptan, both are both drugs are available. Conivaptan is IV, Tolvaptan is oral drug. Tolvaptan dose is initial 50 milli, 15 milligram OD. After at least 24 hours, it may increase to 30 milligram once daily and maximum of 60 milligram once daily and you can slowly titrate the dose down or up. So, the problem with Tolvaptan is rarely it can produce liver injuries. You can see the patient develops uh, STOT, STPT elevation or uh, uh, liver cirrhosis. All these things may be a rare complication and uh, if the creatine clearance is very low also, also you should avoid this type of drugs. So, the most common drug is Tolvaptan. You can start 15 milligram daily, slowly increase the dose 
and when you are decreasing even you can give some patients alternate days that is also safe you can see the sodium some patients if you stop tolvapen suddenly you can see the patients sodium is coming down drastically so instead of that you can uh, give tolvapen every day and once the sodium is normal you can reduce to uh, alternate days or once in 3 days like that also you can give lft has to be monitored Conivaptan is an injectable form of uh, 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 vasopressin receptor antagonist. Uh, it inhibits uh, two or two of the three subtypes of vasopressin receptors. Uh, its loading dose is 20 mg IV administered over 30 minutes, followed by continuous infusion of 20 mg per day over 24 hours for two to maximum four days. Oral salt administration is very important because patients who is having hyponatremia, uh, their uh, clinical symptoms can be increased by, uh, ideally by increase the oral intake. Normally, in a Indian diet, we take around six to eight grams of salt. We can give excess uh, salt to the patient. Somebody is having hyponatremia due to any cause other than volume expansion hyponatremia, uh, like. Uh, hypervolemic hyponatremia cardiac failure liver failure kidney failure all this condition you should you should never try to give salt uh, normal volemic or hyper hypervolemic uh, hyponatremia you can uh, um, you can give sodium you can safely give sodium oral intake because advantage of oral sodium is if the body requires sodium only it will absorb if the body body does not require sodium it will not absorb that excess sodium so oral route is very very safe in uh, hyponatremia especially normal volemic or hypervolemic hypervolemic hyponatremia you should never give uh, excess salt so each 1 gram of sodium chloride contains 17.1 milliequivalents of sodium that has to be very clear for everyone Now, three percent saline, which contains higher amount of sodium, five one three milli equivalents uh, sodium is there in one liter, and each hundred ml that is availability of three percent saline is hundred ml. Each hundred ml contains fifty one point three milli equivalents of sodium. So you can uh, calculate that sodium deficit, and you can give three uh, percent saline. The chart is given here. You can read how to correct the uh, sodium deficiency. only important thing is rapid correction of hyponatremia may be very dangerous A patient can develop central pondine or extra pondine myelolysis so that should be avoided especially in chronic hyponatremia uh, so you have to be very careful normally in an adult we give 10 to 15 ml per hour every 6 hours we check the sodium levels a maximum correction over 24 hours has to be 8 to 10 milliequivalents 12 milligrams 8 to 12 milligrams are uh, 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 like uh, described in some books but we have to be very careful especially in chronic hyponatremia suppose the sodium levels in uh, uh, during admission is 120 today by tomorrow the uh, 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 by this time it has to be 128 only that's all if you correct rapidly and by 6 hours if it is increased to Uh, 135, then it can be dangerous. So we have to be very careful when we are correcting uh, hyponatremia with 3% saline. But in emergencies like coma, seizures, and all, we can push the 3% saline. We can give 3% saline, 100 ml push over 10 to 60 minutes. So there you can give. Otherwise, don't try to give a rapid correction of uh, hyponatremia. Never do that. And different uh, uh, iv fluids contain different amount of uh, sodium uh, in that normal saline first one uh, uh, you can see here 0.9% uh, normal saline contains 154 milliequivalents per liter whereas 3% saline contains 513 milliequivalents per liter so the difference is very huge rate of correction it has to be very slow we have to remember that chronic hyponatremia should be less than 10 milliequivalents per liter in 24 hours that's all but in a uh, acute emergency like seizure or coma rapid correction is recommended 3% sen- saline when we are giving we can calculate the uh, th- sodium requirement 
disad sodium minus uh, serum sodium that is the patient sodium into 0.6 into body weight will give you the amount of sodium requirement from that we can calculate the what is the amount of uh, 3% saline to be given because each 100 ml contains only 51.3 milligrams so that has to be corrected over 24 hours but remember some patient respond very fast and some patients on tolvaptan they respond faster than other patients so when we are giving 3% saline always check the serum sodium every 6 hours and at any point if it is crossing more than 10 milligrams uh, during the first 24 hours stop it and wait for next day and next day only you have to uh, correct the remaining amount so this is a very useful example uh, this uh, patient 50 year old uh, male patient who is having 70 kgs with his sodium levels 110 and he is having altered behavior the desired sodium in 24 hours is 122 because uh, the patient is having 110 today by tomorrow it has to be maximum 122 and it can be even 120 also so in a chronic hyponatremia we only target 120 so the desired sodium minus a patient's current sodium will go give only uh, 12 so 10 or 12 that is a no normally it's a fixed amount because we want to correct only 10 milligrams per day means this uh, has to be 10 only here for calculation purpose we have kept it as 12 so 122 minus 110 we gives uh, 12 into 0 0.6 into body weight so 12 into 42 the 504 milli equivalents is the required sodium for this patient to make uh, sodium levels from 110 to 122 that's a level we got from the what the range we got from the calculation but some patients may not require this much amount they respond faster than other patients because uh, many other body condition they may not have uh, urinary sodium excretion like patient may be on tall vaptan some patients uh, they may not be on tall vaptan and renal loss will be there they require more sodium some patients may require more sodium whatever it is every six hours we are going to check it each 100 ml 3% saline contains 51.3 milli equivalent sodium we have seen the calculation in the previous slides so 504 by 51.3 that is each bottle contains nine that gives a, a, a calculation value of 9.8 bottles so you need to give 9.8 bottles in 24 hours so per hour infusion will be 980 ml per 24 hours 40.8 ml per hour so that is a required infusion for this patient but clinically when we start we may not start like this we may start around 15 to 20 ml only initially then we'll check the sodium after some times if the sodium is not improving only we can raise to this level because some patient uh, due to some reason they respond very fast than other patients and some patients initial lab value can be even wrong also so we have to be very careful initially when we are giving three percent saline faster corrections are required only if the patient is having significant clinical feature if there is a mild feature or if there is no feature always start 15 to 20 ml per hour then if the patient does not clinically improve or does not improve lab wise then you can increase to these values like 40 to 40.8 ml per hour sodium should be checked every four to six hours that is very important at any point of time if the sodium levels crosses to more than 122 during this first 24 hours stop the infusion wait for next day then only restart the infusion so that also has to be very clear and once the patient's sodium level reaches 128 or 130 always discontinue the 3% saline either or oral salt or increased uh, IV fluid with no low sodium content like normal saline should be started so we have discussed about hyponatremia one of the important part of hyponatremia is SIADH syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion that retains this ADH antidiuretic hormone retains some amount of water but because of the reduced aldosterone levels in the body due to some counter regulatory mechanism by ANP the water retention will be slightly reduced what will be removed because of this negative feedback mechanism so patient will never go to a condition like uh, nephrotic syndrome or cardiac failure patient will not have volume excess 
clinically. But here also volume expansion is there, but there is no clinical edema in this patient and volume is actually retained, sodium is lost through the kidneys, patient have high, normal volumic hyponatremia, actually there is slight hypervolemia, but clinically there is normal volumic, volumic hyponatremia. Most of the time there is a definite reason for this. It can be a malignancy in the lungs or brain. It can be due to some infection in the lungs or brain. It can be due to some drugs. Whatever it is, when the sodium is low, kidney should never lose. Uh, sodium is low in blood. Kidney will never lose sodium through the kidneys. If hyponatremia is there and kidney shows increased sodium output, we have to suspect SIADH. Tolvaptan, conivaptan are two important drugs, they can retain sodium inside our body. It prevents the loss of sodium, but the major treatment options are give less water, water retention, oh sorry, uh, water reduction. So intake of water will be uh, restricted. Then diuretics can be given to remove water from the body, give oral salt to increase the uh, uptake of salt from the intestine, give 3% saline, but we have to be very careful when we are giving 3% saline. There should not be overcorrection, especially in patients who is in chronic hyponatremia. Then Tolvaptan. These are the treatment options for SADH. Thank you.